Welcome to EPG Patshala program and today we are going to discuss visual methods in social research and this is part of the paper uh, Metrology of Research in Sociology. I am Dalia Chakraborty, I am a professor in sociology from Jadapur University. Now to begin with visual method is new in sociology as a metrology. Though visuals are as old as any other data, the interesting part is that in today's world communication is very much loaded with visuals. We use visual profiles, we Skype visual materials, gone are the days of words only letters. But still in our academic exercise very often we are shy of using visuals. And if you look at today's society, you will find there is an explosion of signs and symbols. All our communications, formal, informal, face to face, distant, visuals are there. Even a very formal communication on the part of government for a project contains visuals. Or it can be very personal, interpersonal communication between two intensely related persons who use visuals. So we can't just ignore visuals to know the social reality, to understand social situation or to make sure that a particular understanding of social reality can be understood by others. Visuals have now become integral to every communication formal or informal, face to face or distant. Hence social researcher has to know how and why it is created, what it encodes and what is its impact, intended as well as unintended, and how underlying the appearance or form of objectivity of an image, there is a deep structure of meanings which are essentially subjective in nature. Furthermore, the reproducibility of visual images, its accessibility across social strata, direct impact on viewers and most importantly, its reconstructive power make it useful to record illustrate and evaluate events and issues. This may eventually empower all those exposed to visuals either in course of creating it or just as a viewer to bring about social change in a desired direction or to resist any attempt to harm them or others. Yet it is only since the 1990s that the use of visual methods has started gaining ground in social sciences. Students of sociology equipped with the skill of using visual method can explore social reality through local visual experiences and practices like painting, sculptures, photographs or films as well as through sociologist visual experience and practices like photo elicitation interviews which we will discuss later or video documentaries and its analysis. Visual representations offer us possibilities for empathy that is to imagine ourselves into the places represented in the photo and the emotions of the photographed subjects. This capacity might also have a persuasive potential leading towards some form of social activism. Visual methods encompass different forms of visuals like still photography, film, video, graphic representations like charts and maps. Some visuals are stationary as in photo albums, newspapers, billboards, handbill, ads on public walls, art albums, leaflets, etc. And some are moving as in cinema, documentary films, YouTube, blogs, etc. Still photography presents isolated images, whereas a film involves connected images depicting a trajectory of a narrative. Now the sources of visuals. Images may be produced by the researcher, as example a documentary film on an event. Images are also found in cartoons, advertisements, paintings, family photo albums or visual archives. While using images produced by others, the researcher must be aware of underlying subjective positions. What are the features of visuals? Visuals provide us with both objective as well as subjective information. The act of viewing and subsequent interpretation entail emotional engagement. But a photograph can also be conceived as an impersonal record of behavior. Visuals usually appear in a package with 1. A frame signifying that the world of depicted object continues beyond the frame. 
two a caption attributing specific meaning to it and three written text contextualizing its meaning. The viewer confronts this whole package as given. It is left to the researcher to deconstruct it and reassemble it differently. Visuals are of polysemic nature as its meanings differ. The photographer has his or her meaning. Those who have been photographed have their own version. Similarly, the viewers other than the photographers and the photographed subjects may have quite different take of the event. And all these interpretations are subject to change over time and in different contexts and there is no question of primacy of one particular meaning over the other. Visuals are used in multiple ways in sociology. Sociologists categorize parts of the world thus creating data, the scientific mode. Sociologists use their own subjective experience as a source of data, the phenomenological mode. Sociologists structure their data into accounts the narrative mode, sociologists build data from the point of view of their subjects, the reflexive mode. Images may be scientific, narrative, phenomenological or reflexive depending on how they are constructed, presented and viewed. Now we are going to discuss the rise of visual method and its evolution over time. Visual method came into prominence in 1990s with the slow incorporation of visual sociology in the mainstream. Although both photography and sociology were born as products of modern forces of industrialization and bourgeois revolutions in Europe, there was hardly any interpenetration between the two for a long period of time. Unfortunately, founding fathers of sociology didn't use visuals and produced abstract images of society. Fife and Law have identified some of the possible reasons for the marginal status of visuals in social sciences. They observe that though social sciences extensively use visual metaphors like structure and network, depictions are rarely used. Actually, the intense methodological debate in sociology leads to extensive use of verbal mode of communication, often at the cost of other non-dominant modes like the visual communication, as that would further complicate the situation by opening up new area of debate. Secondly, there was deliberate attempt by anti-reductionists to delete body from mainstream classical social theory to make it independent of biology and psychology. With body, I too had been deleted, foreclosing possibility of a visual sociology. Currently, the most important obstacle is a form of shyness on the part of sociologists to create or use images which definitely requires specialized skill to use technology and artistic sense to make it a visual treat and social sensitivity to create sympathetic portrayal. In Grady's words, this can be a case of performance anxiety. Visual sociology gradually emerged from and still has affinity with the documentary photography which in turn gradually developed from fine arts and portraiture photography. Since 1930s, with the rise of photojournalism, sociologists started looking down upon it as a mere part of mass communication. This led to almost total rejection of visual images from academic sociological discussion and analysis. Even Chicago school didn't use photographs for their field studies. By the post-World War era, positivistic insistence on objectivity and dominance of quantitative method made the exclusion of visuals almost complete. Only in 1960s, when West was facing crisis over issues of war, race, class, gender, etc., radical departure from mainstream became a reality in a few photographic studies of social movements. Furthermore, extensive photographic documentation of the mass movements in America of 1960s in a way forced sociologists to take note of it. From the 1960s to the early 1980s, meteorological debates center on the question of whether visual images and recordings can usefully support the positivistic project of social science. A photograph can be taken as an objective record of facts. For some, the subjectivity and specificity of visual images render them invalid for the scientific project of sociology. Others respond that under right controls, the visuals can act as an objective recording method. Mead suggests that cameras left to film continuously without human intervention produce objective materials. The postmodern emphasis on specificity and experience 
and recognition of the fact that both films as well as written texts are social constructs and fictions created in 1980s a favorable environment for the visuals. Unlike the realists, the critiques of positivism focus upon the impossibility of true visual record and the constructedness of the stories of films and videos. Understanding visuals requires a reflexive examination of the context of image production, taking into account the subjectivities and intentions of the actors involved in the production of images. Analysis should focus not only on the content of images, but on the meanings that different individuals give to those images in different contexts. In the 1990s, there is growing acceptance of the fact that the visual is not merely a recording method and support for a word-based discipline as MacDougall observes in social sciences we locate a shift from word and sentence based thought to image and sequence based thought. Harper calls for a redefinition of the relationship between the researcher and the informant in the form of a collaborative approach. Chaplin advocates a collaborative approach that reduces the distance between the discipline and its subject of study. Thus, she argues that rather than visual being the data for verbal analysis, the potential of the visual as knowledge and critical text should be explored. This calls for collaboration not solely between researcher and informants but also between the visual and the textual and the producers of images and words. All these recent efforts to create space for visuals validate the point made by Fife and Law that with the rejection of grand theory, large scale generalizing and the pursuit of laws and the resultant shift of focus on small-scale projects at a local level, social sciences ultimately have secured stability. Hence, time is up for adventures like pursuing visual method for social research. Secondly, Michel Foucault's reintroduction of an interest in the body restores the status and functions of eye. Hence, visuals are now acceptable. Thirdly, as Chaplin points out, analysis itself is a social activity just like the subject matter of social sciences. Social analysis is therefore reflexive in character. Thus, there is necessity of using new textual forms, popularly known as new literary forms, which are compatible with the reflexive character of social analysis itself. This new form, generated out of a critique of positivism, allows experimentation with visuals. Furthermore, the new technological developments play a crucial role enabling easy and inexpensive construction, manipulation and communication of visuals possible. Now what are the steps in visual method? First step obviously is data collection or generation. Now this is possible in visual method through 1. Making visual representations, 2. Examining pre-existing visual representations and 3 collaborating with social actors in the production of visual representations. Ethical questions that is whether photographs or videos of informants may put them in any political or moral crisis should also be considered. Then comes the analysis stage, analysis of visuals produced and collected. The task of the researcher is to locate what has been represented by the images, how far those representations answer to his research questions and then to triangulate this information to form an argument. Semiotics is the most popular approach for analysis of visual images. Semiotics was first defined by its founder Swiss linguist Saussure as I quote a science that studies the life of science within a society. Unquote. A sign can be a word, a sound or a visual image that stands for something else. Rather than simply locating the meaning, it decodes the ways through which the meaning is encoded. The meaning may remain hidden in deep structure of the text. Saussure divides linguistic signs into two components. The signifier that is the sound, image or word and the signified which is the concept of the signifier represents or its meaning. Now see an advertisement image in the subsequent figure. Sign analysis of advertisement of Holix light. What is the sign here? It is the advertisement of Holix light, a health drink meant for adults. What are the signifiers? Four boxes contain images of an adult man with an athletic figure practicing different freehand exercises. 
In three boxes, a very slim woman does the same. In another box, there is a text message. Again, I quote, take a small first. And in the last box, there is the image of a bottle of Holix light. What is signified? Before taking plunge into the tough regime of daily exercise to maintain one's health as well as body shape, Adult men and women may just develop the habit of taking Holix light, which will give them the same result. Signs are both denotative and connotative. Denotation is literal or direct signification. Connotation is implied or indirect signification. For better understanding, see another figure. The advertisement of popular Ayurvedic tonic, Vaidyanath Shankhapushpi, the memory enhancer. Here, an image of Swami Vivekananda in his typical attire and posture is prominently displayed on the wall. Vivekananda's picture denotes a sober decoration of the study room of an adolescent boy. But the connotation is very intriguing. It implies that this tonic will help the child to develop mental abilities comparable with Swami Vivekananda, a man of inner strength and quiet resolve. Let's discuss the forms of visual method. Visual method is often participatory in nature when the subjects are allowed to participate in creating visual data or analyzing it. Participatory visual method enables socially excluded individuals to claim recognition and an affirmative social presence, thereby empowering them for appropriate social action. It is an alternative to a prescriptive top-down model of research where the researcher gives a structured format to the subjects without allowing freedom to reflect on issues they find relevant. Here both, though not on an equal basis, contribute to generate a body of knowledge and gain a better understanding of social reality as well as the joy of creating a piece of art together. Two commonly used methods are photo elicitation interview and shooting scripts. Photo elicitation interviews can be done in two ways. One, a collection of photos showing scenes from subjects' lives can be used to stimulate discussion among several individuals of similar social status or position. With the photographs, the interviews progress spontaneously opening up subjects in many cases beyond anticipation of the researcher. Secondly, subjects may be requested to photograph their environments and comment on the photographs to see social definitions even more from the point of view of the subject. Photo elicitation interview is a vehicle for getting at the point of view of the subjects following Weber's concept of Verstehen. Actually, images in conjunction with interviews can yield far richer data than words-only interviews. Shooting scripts. These are lists of research topics or questions which can be examined via photographic information. Shooting scripts work as guides for photographic and sociological seeing. There is a continuous process of constructing and reconstructing shooting scripts based on daily field experience. Now, the limitations of visual method. First is technology related problems. Practical issues like the costs and the skills required for using certain technologies and storing visual materials are important shortcomings of this method. Technological expertise may enable somebody to deliberately distort reality. Furthermore, the camera may invoke rapport in one situation and shut it down in another. Problems related to the subjects. There is always a possibility of non-cooperation on the part of the subjects in the form of being overly conscious of the presence of the researcher photographer leading to their inability to act naturally in their own social setting. They may not open up and often even misguide the researcher by striking artificial poses. Ethical issues surrounding anonymity and informed consent become crucial in case of films and video. Positivistic insistence on validity, reliability, objectivity can hardly be maintained in visual method. Like any other qualitative method, one may not be able to exactly measure reality using it. It contributes largely to understanding and sensitization. Triangulation of methods to transcend the limitations. Sole dependence on it may result in a partial and even distorted understanding of the world. This is true about every method of social inquiry. Hence, researcher may decide on triangulation of methods. 
For example, as discussed earlier, the photographs can well be used in conjunction with interviews to elicit testimony about the relationship that family members otherwise might not talk about easily. Various administrative reports and official statistical figures may also be used to corroborate the researcher's findings through visuals. Each representation has its own narrative and agenda. Taken together, these can be understood as a set of entangled pathways that interreference each other to create a collage-like representation of reality. Visual research methods are not purely visual. It is possible for the researcher to maintain a meaningful linkage between visual, verbal as well as written to produce a true image of reality as far as possible. Another interesting dimension of visual method is that visual method does not help us to measure reality just like any other quantitative method. But this method helps us to understand reality, to get a sensitization about reality and often to make sense of a reality is more important than measuring the same. So in this module what we have done is we have tried to make sure to our audience that visual method is a significant method though a newcomer in sociology. It has certain positive dimensions as well as some limitations and there are certain ways to overcome the limitations by ensuring triangulation of different methods.